this is a common misconception where people think that if you have an application running on a single core machine and then you go and buy and invest and upgrade from single core to 100 cores, your application will run better. This is not the case. Because at the end of the day, you need to take care of the multi-threading concepts. You need to make your code multi-threading aware. Unless you do that, all this booming in the hardware world, it will not benefit you. So, what, what was the problem when using parallel programming, which was called multi-threading? I mean, any guys who have done multi-threading code, uh, multi-threading coding knows the problem of multi-threading. It's extremely difficult. It's very, very rare that you get a multi-threading application running smoothly from the first time, or even from the tenth time. Mistakes will happen. Now, the parallel programming, the new .NET 4.0 parallel programming extensions are an initiative, which means whatever you will see today is not final. Okay, it's just an initiative. And Microsoft will build on that, it will enhance on all capabilities you will see you will see today. So this is the, just the context of parallel programming. Why do we need it? And I repeat, it is a must. Before it was maybe it was a choice. If you want to uh, write multi-threading, you write. These days, it's a crime if you see all this uh, hardware power and not take advantage of it. So parallel programming from now on is a must. Okay, so let me just go through in a five minutes uh, the history of, I mean not the history, I mean the case, why do we need parallel programming and what are the options today before we start the demo. So, as I said, multi-cores, which means we need to think about parallel programming. Good. However, when you think about parallel programming, there is a common uh, problem, which is partitioning. Let me give it to you in a very simple way. If you are writing a for loop, you all know how to write for loops. When you say for, and integer i from 0 to 10. Okay, this is a serial for loop. When you want to parallelize this loop, you have a problem you need, you need to take care. How do you partition your work? So let's say in this 10 loop for, uh, code, that's 10 iterations for loop, you do you do 10 operations. How do you tell your, your uh, I mean, multi-threading, your threads, how do you want to partition the work? So you have more than one option to partition. First option is static partition. Which means, you say that I want to partition my code on 10 threads. So I will write my code to run on 10 threads. Okay, this is, this is good, it's an improvement. But it has a problem of, uh, I mean it's static, right? So if you run your, your, machine, your code on a dual core machine, it's okay. But if you go to a 100 core machine, you are, your code is still configured to run on 10 threads. Which is a problem. So this is not, is not a choice. The other option which is dynamic partition. By dynamic partition you say, for each thread, and give one job for each thread of my application. Okay, so if I'm doing 10 jobs, assign each job to a single thread. Which is an improvement, but it also has a problem of load imbalance. What does this mean? Is that it's very rare that when you have 10 jobs, each job will take the same time. Usually, one job will take something like, let's say, one second. Another job will take two seconds, and etc. So if you do this kind of partitioning, you will find that uh, threads will not be utilized. One thread will finish, and it will continue waiting. It has nothing to do. Why? Because your code is configured to run on 10 threads. Now the final solution, which will be the base of whatever you will see today, which is over partitioning. What does that mean is that you want to tell your processor that keep creating threads until I have jobs, until I have no more jobs. So you have 100 jobs, 200 jobs, I don't care. You tell the, uh, you tell the uh, CLR that keep creating threads for every new job. Now this is, this, is a big, this is the final solution. And this was the one implemented in .NET previously. But this has a very, very big problem, which is creating and killing threads. Uh, threads are expensive, okay? So what this partitioning type of partitioning does is that it creates a thread and it kills the thread once the job of the thread finishes. So the problem is that, again, threads are heavyweight processes. It's really expensive to create and kill a thread. That's why, for any guys who have done multi-threading code, they know about the .NET thread pool. And .NET thread pool is not new. It's not 4.0 stuff. It's older. What the .NET thread pool does is that it doesn't create and kill a thread. It creates a thread, and when the thread finishes, it, put its, it, it puts the thread on the queue. And when another job is created, 
It takes the thread from the queue and assigns that job to the thread. So that was great. So why do we need .NET 4.0? This, this uh, solution was already there. And no major improvements on this happened on .NET 4.0. Why do we need, what, what does .NET 4.0 give, gives us? It's about usability. The idea, I mean, the problem with the thread pool is that it's like fire and forget. So it's fire and forget. Which means that once you initialize a thread, you have no way to follow this thread. You have no way to tell when this, this thread has finished. Uh, when it has returned the result, you cannot do that in the thread pool. Let's say up until 3.5. So what is the solution for this? Now in .NET 4.0 and later, you will not deal with threads anymore. You will deal with tasks. So instead of creating lower level threads, which you can do by the way, of course, you can still do if you want to do it. But instead of dealing with these low level threads with all the different, different uh, difficult code, from now on you deal with tasks. We will explain this as we go. Uh, so that 4.0 is made of something called Task Parallel, Parallel Library, it's TPL. And the TPL is made of the task class, we will see that in a little more. The parallel class, which you will find very, very interesting because you will use it, you will use it daily on your work. And right now, for example, instead of writing a for loop, you write parallel dot for loop. Instead of writing for each, you write parallel dot for each. And instead of calling methods sequentially, like method one semicolon, method two semicolon, you, you package those inside something called parallel dot info, and these methods run in parallel. And finally, which I believe will be the most interesting part for you, which is the billing. Okay, you know, most of you know link. Now there's something called peeling, and you'll see how much it's easy to convert from link to peeling. What's next? So, let's start with what I called demo fiesta. Uh, who was at uh, GDC? Who attended GDC? Okay, did you see the uh, parallel programming demo? I I did the .NET 4.0 session, the Ray Tracer example. Only one. Okay, so to be new. So what I will show you now is something I will just, I need to show you the result. I need to set the expectation of what's happening. But this is not the demo I will, I will use, the code that you will see. So there's a program called Ray Tracer. It's done by Microsoft. It's a very cool, cool program, which shows the power of parallel programming. So this is a Ray Tracer program. Uh, what, what you will see now is something running in Syria. Okay, so I will not check this checkbox here. You see it, which is called parallel. I will click start. Now once I do this, something cool here will happen. Now these two, I mean, this animation is happening. It's a happy animation. And if you take a look, take a look at the test manager, it's utilizing one of my CPUs. I have, this is a dual core machine, uh, only two cores. So as you see, that 50% of the machine is being utilized. And as you can see, the, the animation is, is weak, it's slow. Now what will happen is that I will stop the parallel program, sorry, the serial execution. I will check here the parallel checkbox and click start again. Now immediately my machine will start screaming. Okay? And you can notice the animation now is much better. Not ideal, but not much better because now I'm utilizing the two cores. And as you can see that now, my CPU is being 100% utilized. Okay, which means both cores are now being utilized. Okay? So this is what parallel programming can do for you. Uh, this is an, just an example of the how much improvement <coughs> and enhancement you can get to your applications using parallel programming. Okay. This was something that I did not build, so I'm not exactly proud of it. Okay. So let's start with our demos. Uh, everyone can see the fonts, because I will write some code for you. It's okay? So, as I said, the first component of our TPL is called tasks. What is tasks? It's simply a class called task, where I can say, for example, task t equal the static class task dot factory dot start new, and from here I can start a new method. Okay, so this code, in case you don't know it, 
It's anonymous methods, right? I'm using the anonymous methods features in C sharp. This is just like a standard method call. Anyway, so I am I'm creating a task. Okay, that's great, but that was also doable. I mean, via threads, not tasks. It was also doable in .NET 3.5. The new features that you do not have in .NET 3.5 is something like this. I can say, for example, var t2 equal t dot continue with, and inside I will write a delegate and run 